Good evening. First tonight, the stupid and reckless act that ended in a seven-year jail sentence for a man who shot his best friend dead as they tested what they believed was a bulletproof vest. The court heard lorry driver Ian Catley from Cambridgeshire was persuaded to help his friend try out the protective garment. But when he fired his shotgun at Philip Harper from just 20 feet, it killed him almost instantly. Matthew Hudson reports. From journalists and cameramen to politicians and security staff, we're all used to seeing people in body armour on our TVs and increasingly in our streets. Up-to-date bulletproof vests like this one are light and, to be honest, pretty comfortable. It would cost you around £260 new, but it's capable of stopping a bullet from just about any kind of handgun short of a magnum at extremely close range. They're popular not just with police forces, but increasingly with security guards and ordinary members of the public. But unscrupulous dealers are selling second-hand vests online and through surplus shops. Experts say many are useless, either old and degraded, or designed to stop blades, not bullets. 46-year-old Philip Harper from Meldrath near Cambridge bought what he thought was a bulletproof vest. He died in June last year after being shot in the chest by his friend Ian Catley. They decided to test the body armour while out shooting on this farmland south of Meldrath. Mr Harper's mother described him as a delinquent Ray Mears who was always up for a challenge. Catley admitted manslaughter and today was sentenced to seven years at Southwark Crown Court. Experts say no one should buy or trust any military equipment bought second-hand or from anything other than a reputable source. A lot of it is ex-police stock, so it's, it's reached the end of its life, it's no good to anybody and it gets disposed of to surplus stores. So really, it's not, it's not fit for purpose now, you know. And uh, should, should surplus stores be making that clear when they sell these things? They do, they do sometimes sell it uh, at your own risk, it's second-hand armour. Um, we wouldn't recommend that at all. Judge Geoffrey Pegden QC heard that after the shooting, Catley took his friend to Melbourne Ambulance Station, where he died. The judge told Catley, the risk of death or serious injury to Mr Harper must, in my judgment, have been absolutely obvious to you when you shot him at close range. Catley told police he'd only fired because his friend wanted him to. Matthew Hudson, ITV News, Cambridgeshire. An 18-year-old woman's been arrested on suspicion of terrorism offences after getting off a flight at Stansted Airport. Counter-terrorism officers arrested her at around 4 o'clock this afternoon. She's now been taken to a police station in London where she remains in custody. Two teenagers who stabbed to death a young father at a 21st birthday party in Norfolk were today sentenced to a minimum of 15 years in custody. 15-year-old Io Bile and 18-year-old Jesse Quay from Great Yarmouth were convicted of murder at Norwich Crown Court in November. They'd killed 20-year-old Connor Barrett, who was a young father, and the DJ at the party in the nearby village of Hemsby in May last year. Judge Stephen Holt described Connor as a much-loved young man who was the victim of a knife-carrying culture. Meanwhile, the father of a teenager stabbed to death in Chelmsford a week before Christmas has said he wants his funeral to be a celebration of his life. Ashley Woolley was killed on his way to college in December. Serena Sandu reports. Ashley Woolley lived barely 19 years, but according to his dad, he filled it with energy, friendship and lots of laughter. His violent death has left his dad Trevor and the rest of his family struggling to cope. We keep talking about his smile, but... It was magical. You could see it from down the road. You could see him beaming up. I just, just keep wanting the phone to ring to say, Dad, this has been a big joke. And him to start laughing because he had such a, a wicked, funny laugh. And we know it's never going to happen. Ashley was stabbed to death in Oaklands Park in Chelmsford on the 18th of December. He would have been 19 at the end of the month. This was Ashley on his first day at Boswell School in Chelmsford. At the time of his death, he was studying business at Chelmsford College and wanted to study law at university with his girlfriend. Ashley was a very loving young man. He always liked to make people happy. If he could have a laugh and a joke, he always would do. He loved his free running and he always used to make us worry that he'd break something, either himself or whatever he was jumping off of. 
Ashley's funeral will be held on Monday at Chelmsford Cathedral. His friends from school and college will be there. His family want it to be a colourful event and a celebration of his life. I want them to see Monday as not his funeral. It's the time to say goodbye to him, because that's what we're doing. But also, just to remember the good times that everyone had with him. Trevor says the whole family have been deeply touched by messages of support. Ironically, it's taken Ashley's death for them to realise just how many people he'd touched in life. Serena Sandu, ITV News, Whittam. A woman pedestrian in her 90s has died after a collision with a bus in Colchester. Officers were called to East Hill in the town centre at around five this evening. The woman, who police say was from the town, died at the scene. A former UKIP parliamentary candidate for Great Yarmouth has insisted he didn't forge signatures on nomination papers for the county council elections in Norfolk in 2013. Matthew Smith, the party's election agent at the time, told a jury at Norwich Crown Court there was no motive for him to do it and he had no idea who was responsible. He pleads not guilty to a total of nine charges. Troops who were among the first and last to serve in Afghanistan have paraded at Colchester's Merville Barracks. Members of 16 Air Assault Brigade formally marked the end of their time helping to overthrow the Taliban and honoured the memory of the soldiers they lost. Kate Prout reports. One thousand troops with one thing in common. All have spent time on deployment in Afghanistan and seen the impact of a war against the Taliban. It's weird when you, when you go home, you think, oh, I can't wait to get out of this place, but you sort of miss, you know, being out there and doing the job properly. You know, out uh, being a medic, you hope no one ever gets injured, but when it does, you know, you have to step up there and be that, that guy for them. <laughs> Today's parade not only marked the arrival home of the last members of the brigade in December, but it was also a chance to remember the 58 soldiers who died in combat. Extremely humbling to you know, be on parade. Of those names that were read out, I personally knew sort of 20 of those and would class five as, as very good friends. Uh, so it brings it into pers uh, perspective, uh, everything we've done. Also present, members of the Army Air Corps based at Watersham. Their Apache helicopters remained in Afghanistan from 2006 until 2014. Their ability to provide precision strikes and escort and support air and land troops proved invaluable to the mission. The level of commitment we have over the eight years um, has, has been challenging, but we succeeded. Um, and. The, the lessons we've learned uh, have been substantial and we've developed and grown as a force, as an Apache force, uh, because of uh, our time in Afghanistan. British troops may no longer be in Afghanistan, but we still live in an uncertain world and the brigade is well prepared for whatever conflict comes next. Kate Brout, ITV News. Throughout this academic year, many children will be taking part in the Sainsbury's School Games, where they compete in more than 30 sports against rival schools from their county. Today it was the turn of Essex, and 47 schools travelled to Harlow to take part. Around 4,000 primary and secondary school children competed in a number of sports which took place in several venues in Harlow. The idea behind it is really to continue that legacy from not just from 2012, but from the Commonwealth Games last year, the Invictus Games and the upcoming Rugby World Cup as well, to use that inspiration to continue our next cohort of elite athletes coming through. And it's the 30th anniversary of the launch of what was supposed to be the future of motoring. The Sinclair C5 was designed by Sir Clive Sinclair in Cambridge back in 1985. And although it didn't do quite as well as it hoped, one woman from Stowmarket in Suffolk still has one of them, and Sarah Gascoigne says she has loved driving it. OK, it's a very chilly forecast for you now. Here's Aidan with all the details. In winter, Daddy says our pipes need pullovers, just like me. <laughs> Anglian Water, sponsors of ITV Anglia Weather. Hello, good evening. It's set to be a cold weekend with frosty nights, but dry and bright spells for a lot of the time. However, there is a risk 
from time to time of sleet or snow showers. Tonight, though, is dry and it is clear. Temperatures dropping well below freezing in some spots. A bitterly cold start to Saturday morning and the risk of some patchy snow and ice in places as a band of precipitation moves in from the west. That may well give a slight covering in places, but no real significant amounts. Into the afternoon, largely dry and bright, but on Sunday, again, another very cold day. A lot of cloud about. The risk of rain, perhaps sleet towards the south, maybe the odd snow flurry further north. Anglian Water. Sponsors of ITV Anglia Weather. Well, we're back with our first bulletin this weekend at five past five tomorrow evening. Until then, good night.